Hey everyone, and welcome back for another deep dive. Today we're going to be looking at something that's really uh, fundamental to the planet that we all live on. Yeah. We're going to be talking about plate tectonics. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got some really cool sources that are going to basically give us a visual guide to how plate tectonics works. Yeah, these are really spectacular sources. Um, and I think what's so interesting about plate tectonics is that it's a story that's always unfolding. Oh, yeah. You know, it's happening all the time right beneath our feet. Yeah. It's like a slow motion planetary ballet. Okay. And every step leaves a lasting mark. So, like, if we imagine a mountain range. Yeah. How did that get Well, there? it all comes down to the interaction of these tectonic plates. Okay. So you got to think of the Earth's outer layer the lithosphere okay. as this giant jigsaw puzzle, but the pieces are constantly in motion, right? bumping and grinding against each other. Yeah. These are what we call the tectonic plates. And what's crazy is they're not even resting on like solid ground, are they? No, they're floating. Yeah. They're floating on a partially molten layer. Oh, wow. Called the asthenosphere. Yeah. So it's like a sea of fire beneath our feet. Yeah. And driven by the heat from the Earth's core. Yeah. This layer is in constant motion, okay. creating currents that act like these giant conveyor belts. Pushing and pulling these plates above. So it's like this slow motion dance where they're... Waltzing around, creating mountains, causing earthquakes, and even, you know, birthing volcanoes. Absolutely. And just like any good dance. There are different steps involved. Okay. We have convergent boundaries where plates collide. Right. Divergent boundaries where they move apart. And transform boundaries where they slide past each other horizontally. Okay, so we've got different types of boundaries, and we've also got different types of plates, right? Yeah, we do. We've got oceanic plates. And continental plates. That's right. So the oceanic plates are denser. And they cover like the majority of the Earth's surface, right? Yeah, 71% of the Earth's surface is covered by oceanic plates. Okay, so they're mainly made of basalt. Ah. Um, and because they're denser, yeah. when they run into a continental plate, they sort of... They dive underneath. Yeah. It's called subduction. Subduction, yeah. It's like a tablecloth sliding under a dinner plate. Okay, so the denser plate... Is pushed under the lighter plate. Yeah, and that's where things get really interesting. What happens there? Well, as that oceanic plate sinks deeper into the mantle, yeah. it melts. Okay. And that molten rock rises up okay and this often leads to the formation of volcanoes oh wow so like some of the most dramatic features on earth absolutely are a result of this push and pull yeah okay so continental plates are thicker thicker less dense uh -huh. mainly made of granite yeah so they make up the continents the continents we live on yeah okay but they're not just bumping into each other no. they're also moving apart absolutely and that's where divergent boundaries come in Picture two plates slowly moving apart. Yeah. Creating this space for magma to rise from the mantle. So it's like the earth is constantly creating it new land. Like, as that magma cools and solidifies, or, yeah. it forms new crust. Okay. Widening the gap between these plates. So that's how we get things like mid-ocean ridges. And that's right. Mid-ocean ridges, rift valleys. Even underwater volcanoes. So I've always been kind of blown away by the idea of mid-ocean ridges. Oh, yeah. They're spectacular. Yeah, but like the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is this huge underwater mountain range. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge is a fantastic example. Yeah. Um, it's a massive underwater mountain range. Stretches for thousands of miles. Yeah. That's where the North American and Eurasian plates are pulling apart. Right. And new seafloor is constantly being created. So it's like this constant construction zone yeah. underwater. It is. And it's happening at like a pretty steady pace, right? Yeah, plates move at a rate of a few centimeters per year. Okay. Which might not sound like much. But think about it. It's about the same rate that your fingernails grow. Wow. Over millions of years. Yeah. That adds up to some pretty significant changes. Yeah, even though it's happening slowly, it's just constantly reshaping the planet. Absolutely. It's incredible. So we've got plates colliding. We've got plates pulling apart. We've got mountains. We've got volcanoes. So what about earthquakes? Uh, earthquakes. They're a reminder that all this movement right. isn't always smooth and graceful. Yeah. Sometimes when these plates try to slide past each other, they get stuck. Stuck like a jam. Geological traffic jam. Exactly. And just like in a traffic jam, the pressure builds up. Until it can't be contained anymore. Okay. And then boom, those plates suddenly slip. Right releasing a tremendous amount of energy in the form of seismic waves. Yeah. And we feel that as an earthquake. And that slipping usually happens. Along faults, right? That's right. Faults are like the stars left behind all right. by all this tectonic activity. Okay. There are zones of weakness. In the Earth's crust, where the rocks have moved past each other. 
So there are different types of faults depending Ice, on how the plates are moving. <laughs> yeah. We've got normal faults where tension causes rocks to pull apart. Okay. Reverse faults where compression forces rocks to push together. And strike slip faults. Where rocks slide horizontally past each other. So the type of fault kind of tells you something about the forces that are absolutely and one of the most famous examples is the san andreas fault that's right right san andreas fault in california where the pacific plate is sliding past the north american plate that's right and that's one that causes some pretty big earthquakes unfortunately yes san andreas fault is a constant reminder that we live on a dynamic planet yeah and while plate tectonics shapes our world in these incredible ways it also poses certain challenges yeah it's a powerful force. So as we dig deeper into the world of plate tectonics, we really see this complex interplay of forces, movements, and interactions. Perhaps. It's a story of creation and destruction. Of slow, steady change. And then these sudden, dramatic events. But it's a story that's still unfolding. That's right. So much energy is involved in you know, all this movement of the plates. It really is. It's pretty incredible. And, you know, one of the results that we can all see from you know, this dance of the plates are volcanoes. Yeah, volcanoes, Aww. those fiery mountains. That spew molten rock and ash. They're both beautiful and terrifying at the same time. They are a sight to behold. And a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, so how do they actually form? Like, is it just random or is there a pattern? Well, there is a pattern. Okay. Volcanoes typically form at convergent and divergent plate boundaries. Okay. It's all about where magma or molten rock okay. can find a pathway to the surface. So at those divergent boundaries where they're pulling apart, yeah. it's like the earth is cracking open. Exactly. And it makes sense that we get those mid-ocean ridges and the rift valleys. But at convergent boundaries where plates are colliding, it's a little bit more intense. It is. You know, with subduction where one plate... Right, like the tablecloth analogy. Yeah. As that subducting plate sinks deeper into the mantle. It starts to melt. Okay. And that molten material being less dense than the surrounding rock. Rises to the surface. Okay. Often erupts, creating volcanoes. So some of the most iconic volcanoes are formed from... Essentially that collision and melting of those plates. Precisely. What are the Pacific Ring of Fire? Oh, the Ring of Fire. Yeah, it's this zone of intense volcanic and earthquake activity right. that circles the Pacific Ocean. It's home to some of the most active volcanoes on Earth. Absolutely. Like Mount Fuji. Mount Fuji. Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens. Or Mount Vesuvius. Yeah, these are volcanoes that have captured our imaginations. And sometimes, unfortunately, caused great destruction. Yeah, but they also, you know, create new land. Yes. They enrich soils. Absolutely. They can even influence the atmosphere. And right. They're both creators and destroyers. That's a great way to put it. Let's talk about mountains now. Mountains. Those majestic peaks. That seem to touch the sky. I've always been fascinated by mountains. And, you know, some are jagged peaks. Some are rolling hills? Yeah. Is there a reason for that? There is. Okay. It comes down to the type of plate interaction oh. that formed them. As we touched on earlier, mountains primarily form at convergent plate boundaries. Okay. Where continental plates collide. So it's like this huge showdown. It is. These immense forces pushing and folding the Earth's crust upwards. Creating those towering mountain ranges. Yeah, like the Himalayas. The Himalayas, exactly. A result of the ongoing collision between the Indian and Eurasian plates. Yeah, and the Andes Mountains in South America. The Andes Mountains, that's right. Formed from the Nazca Plate subducting beneath the South American Plate. But mountains aren't just beautiful landscapes, are they? No, they're not. They play a vital role in our planet's climate and ecosystems. How so? They act as barriers to wind and weather patterns. They right? influence rainfall distribution. And they create these diverse habitats for plants and animals. So something that looks so prominent is actually constantly evolving. That's right. Even though it's at a really slow pace. That's the beauty of it. The forces of plate tectonics are always at work. Okay. Reshaping mountains through erosion weathering and even uplift. So while they might seem unchanging, they're constantly in flux. Yeah. We can't talk about the forces that shape the planet without talking about earthquakes. Absolutely. Earthquakes. Those sudden, often violent shakings of the ground. Right. That can unfortunately cause widespread destruction. They're a result of the stress that builds up along faults. Faults those zones of weakness. That's right. In the Earth's crust. Exactly. Sometimes as the plates try to move. They get stuck along these faults. Right. And when that stress exceeds the strength of the rocks. Boom. 
They suddenly slip. Yeah. Releasing energy in the form of seismic waves. Those waves ripple through the air. Causing the ground to shake. And we measure the intensity on the Richter scale. That's right. The higher the number on the Richter scale, the more powerful the earthquake. And we usually find earthquakes at plate boundaries. Right. Yeah. Particularly along those transform faults. Like the San Andreas Fault. Yeah. But sometimes I've heard that we can get earthquakes. Away from the boundaries. You're right. While less frequent, we do get earthquakes that happen within plates. Okay. These are called intraplate earthquakes. And they're often associated with ancient faults. That are reactivated by stress from plate movements. Well, even though they're not right on a plate boundary, right. they're still sensitive to all that pressure. Exactly. It's a reminder that the forces of plate tectonics aren't just limited to plate boundaries. But can be felt throughout the Earth's lithosphere. It's all interconnected. It is. So as we delve deeper into the world of plate tectonics, we really see a complex interplay of forces, movements, and interactions. Absolutely. It's an incredible story of creation and destruction. Slow, steady change. And then these sudden dramatic events that can reshape the landscape. And it's a story that's still unfolding. With every earthquake, volcanic eruption, and even the slow rise of a mountain range. Reminding us of the dynamic nature of our planet. Well, we're back again and ready to wrap up our deep dive into plate tectonics. Yeah, it's been quite a journey. It really has. And in this final part, I think we really need to sort of step back and think about the bigger picture. Absolutely. You know, how does this constant dance of the plates impact life here on Earth? Yeah, it's mind-blowing when you think about it. It really is. Um, you know, something as seemingly simple as the movement of these massive plates yeah. has huge consequences. For everything. Yeah, and... What's really fascinating is that plate tectonics isn't just about destruction. Right. You know, these dramatic events like earthquakes and volcanoes. Yeah. It actually plays a really crucial role in creating the conditions necessary for life. Okay. So how do these giant slabs of rock, you know, m make life possible? Well, for one thing, plate tectonics helps regulate Earth's temperature. Okay. So volcanic eruptions, ah! which are driven by plate tectonics, right. release gases into the atmosphere. Okay. And these gases influence climate patterns. Over time. Okay. And the process of subduction. Right, where the oceanic plate goes under. Exactly. That actually helps recycle carbon dioxide. Okay. Preventing a runaway greenhouse effect. So it's kind of like a giant thermostat yeah. for the planet. It's a good analogy. Keeping it from getting too hot or too cold. That's right. That's incredible. And it also plays a key role in the formation of continents. Okay. Which provides the land masses that we call home. Right. So, you know, over millions of years, continents have drifted apart and collided. Right. Shaping yeah. the distribution of land and water. Yeah. And influencing the evolution of life itself. I mean, what if it weren't for plate tectonics? Yeah. You know, Earth could be just one giant barren supercontinent. That's right. Or a water world with no land at all. It's a possibility. It's crazy. And we can't forget about the role of plate tectonics. In creating mineral resources? Oh, yeah. The stuff that we rely on. Exactly. Yeah. So the movement and interaction of plates uh -huh. concentrate valuable minerals. Forming deposits of gold, silver, copper. Other essential resources. So our smartphones are basically thanks to plate tectonics. In a way, yes. That's crazy. It's a fascinating paradox. It is. The same forces that can unleash earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. Also provide us with the building blocks of civilization. It's pretty remarkable. It makes you appreciate the power and complexity of the Earth. Absolutely. So what does the future hold for our planet? That's a great question. You know, will the continents continue to drift? Will new mountains rise? What about the Pacific Ring of Fire? Is it going to, you know, erupt with even greater fury? Those are all questions that geologists are constantly exploring. Yeah. You know, we can use our knowledge of plate tectonics to model and predict future movements. Right. But Earth is a complex system. Yeah. And there are always surprises. I guess that's part of what makes it so fascinating. Exactly. And it's a constant reminder that we're living on a dynamic, ever-evolving planet. Absolutely. And that is the enduring legacy of plate tectonics. It's a force that both challenges and inspires us. Yeah. Reminding us that our planet is constantly changing and reshaping itself. It's been an awesome journey exploring the world of plate tectonics today. I agree. So we want to thank you for joining us for this deep dive. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next time.